So today we're going to be talking about chapter 23, and we're going to be dealing with various types of collections that we can work with. So the first one we want to talk about is something called an array list. So an array list is just a way of creating an array, but you have some more dynamic flexibility. So when you normally instantiate an array, you have to hard code you know, how many elements are going to be in that array. But with an array list, we can sort of add and remove as we want. It's not always just set to a fixed size. So let's go ahead and create ourselves an array list. We'll call this my array list equals a new array list. So because this is a class, we have to use the new keyword, and we can see now we've declared our variable array list. So what's nice about using an array list is that there's lots of different methods that we can use to manipulate the data. So we can add data, we can add a range of data by passing another collection, we can figure out the capacity of it, we can go ahead and just clear it all. We can copy it too, we can figure out the count, how many elements are in there. We can find you know, the index of a particular element, we can insert elements. So it's just kind of nice to be able to have all these extra methods to be able to manipulate the data. And we don't have the flexibility where you don't have to hard code or figure out how large our value needs or array needs to be. So let's go ahead and we declared our array list. So now here I'm just adding some values here. So you can just think of constantly adding on new array elements is all this is doing. Here I'm showing you how to insert a value into our array list. We're, so you can see we're inserting it at the second index because it's zero base, so zero, then one. Here I'm removing a value from here, so I'm going to remove this value j. Here I'm going to actually sort the array list. And then down here I'm going to do a for each statement, so I'm saying for each string in my array list. Now the thing about an array list that you want to pay attention to is you'll notice that when I do the add method, you see how it's in my IntelliSense it says adding an object for the value. When I'm inserting, I'm inserting an object for the value here. And so that's important to remember because that means that I can pass in anything I want. I can have, for instance, I can say dot add. I can pass in the number one. I can say dot add, pass in the string ABC. I could pass in doubles, I can pass in chars, I can pass in anything I want because it says, hey, you're passing in an object. So that means since everything is derived from the base class object, I can pass anything I want into this array list, or I can add anything I want. Now what that also means is that there's some what's called boxing and unboxing going on. So every time I add this into here, I have to then box it into an object type, right? I have to cast it to an object. And then when I pull this out, so if I were to then pull out this particular element, which I can access like this, so let's say this was the first element, so I've added this one, now I want to pull out this element, well this returns to me an object data type. So that means it has to unbox it, or I would have to then cast it into an integer type, because it's going to return me a type integer when I pull this back out. So that's the downside to array lists, and we're going to show how to fix that in just a second with a different data type. So the next thing we want to look at here is something called a hash table. So you've probably heard of hash tables before. And hash tables are just high-speed indexed arrays. So they're a way of a, just a lookup table. So we've got this big array, and then we can use a hash to, f to store values into this array or to be able to quickly pull them back out. So we've got a hash table. We'll call this my hash equals a new hash table. And now we can go ahead and we can add some values to my hash table. So my hash table dot add, and what we could do is something like a social security number, for instance. So this is a always has to be a unique number. So we'll just make up some social security number. Then what we need to do is say, okay, I'm now going to pass in the value from that's hashed with this key here. So you'll notice that I pass in a key and I pass in a value for my hash. So what it's going to do is it's going to take this key here. So this has to be unique in my hash. 
So I can never have two of these keys stored in this hash. They always have to be some unique ID. And that will be applied to this value over here. So you can think of this big array and then it performs a hashing algorithm on this key that I pass in to figure out a unique index in that array. So this, these hashing algorithms, the better the hashing algorithm that are used, the more unique keys you could get. And so you don't have to worry about collisions because they're taking care of all that for you. And so then when you want to pull this value back out, you can do something like this here where you pass in the key to the hash and it's going to return this value and it can do it really quickly because it's going to use this key apply that same hash then it knows what index to go look for in your array or if you're using an array or an array list you'd have to loop through let's say you had a thousand elements you'd have to loop through each element to find the element you're looking for where here it takes you just directly to it so it's a high speed accessed array now also you'll notice that I'm adding in an object as a key and adding in an object of a value so we're going to run into that same problem of problem of boxing and unboxing but it also means you can add into it whatever you want now the reason I was mentioning that a lot is because now you would never want to use hash tables and array list. They've actually been replaced in the .NET framework, but I want to talk about them because you're going to have to maintain lots of legacy code that probably does use hash tables and array lists. So what have they been replaced with? Well, let's talk about the array list has been replaced with something called a dictionary. So let's take a look at a dictionary. So I start typing in dictionary. Now you'll notice that we just talked about generics. So here's this less than and greater than sign. So we know that a dictionary is using generics. And so when I say my dictionary, I'm going to actually have to pass in, hey, what type of key are you passing in? So I can say my key is an integer type and my value is a string, for instance. So maybe I'm passing in a social security number here, an employee ID something that's just purely an integer or for this case let's just say they're both strings and I'm gonna call this my dictionary so now when I say new dictionary you can see it actually now knows that both of these are strings for me so it actually just fills that in which is kinda nice so now I've created a dictionary and so this is the generic version of the hash table and so now there's never any boxing or unboxing or casting going on so you'll notice when I say add here, it knows that, hey, I'm expecting a string to be passed in as the key and a string to be passed in as the value. So this is the new way that you would use a hash table is with this thing called a dictionary. And if for some reason you did want mixed types of values here, you could always declare this with type object and get that original functionality where you could pass in mixed types rather than them having to all be strings. And so here's how you would add a value to your dictionary. Here's how you would remove a value. Again, you just pass in the key. And then here's how you would pull out a value. You just have to pass in just like you did with the hash table. So now the next generic that we're going to talk about is a what's called a list. So this replaces the array list. And sure enough, we're doing with generics again. So where our array list you had you could pass in an object and hold anything with a list you have to tell it the type that you're gonna pass in for instance maybe I want to hold a generic list of strings so we'll call this my list equals a new list so now I've created a list of strings exactly the same as my array list except now it's strongly typed of type string and I can use it exactly the same or I can say my list dot add and you'll notice the add now knows that you're passing in a string and it knows that you're removing a string and here's how you would actually pass in you know pull in the zero element of that array or of that list